Hey, so hi everyone. It's the night before the Imperium Cup. And here are some stats for you to ace your Imperium Cup tournament. So here we go. So from the, the last rank system to current rank system, and the last Imperium Cup to the current Imperium Cup, some things have changed. And the main thing, the, other than the, like the meta shifting and all, the some things that have changed is that we have changed the, the pick order. So the pick order previously was uh, 4 3 2 1 and all done in hid hidden picks. But second position was winning by a large margin. And so we have changed the system to be a 4 3 1 2 pick. And we have removed more leaders. Okay, uh, so the exact amount of leaders that are going to be re removed is not decided. I think Shadow will confirm this and it will either be 7 or 8. Um, but I think the idea of it is similar. And so let's look at what the new stats are. So in terms of win rate by position, right, the, the blue one is what was previously. So uh, so you look at the blue one, the blue one is 4 3 one remove 6. And it has second position winning at like 28.4%. Uh, so it just wins more. And like fourth position wins at 23%. So when we shifted to 4 3 one two, remove 8, right? And then uh, so we have more or less everyone around 24 to 25% with position 1 winning 25.9% uh, then position 4 winning at 24% so this I think is relatively acceptable but um, because this is based on like uh, 1299 games uh, with more games coming in obviously this this can become more accurate but I think it's really pretty good for now um, and I'm not sure if we will keep remove eight for the tournament, but if we remove, let's say if we remove seven, right? What I would expect if you remove seven, there are more good leaders that go to earlier positions, so fourth position win rate should go down, and other positions should increase. So, so that's my prediction. If it is remove seven. So in terms of the. The Imperium Cup, how 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 it's gonna be right is that if you're in the if you come in first in your group right you get five points you get you you get first in your game you get five points for the for the group game if you come in second you get three points if you come in third you get two points and you come in fourth you get one point okay so uh so in some sense the the placements that you finish is weighted. And so if you multiply the the position by by weight and then you normalize it across the, the game count, right? The the point value pos by position, right, is as such. For position 1, it's at 2.77. Position 2 is at 2.76. Position 3 is at 2.77. And position 4 is at 2.69. So more or less quite equal across the board with position 4 uh, faring, faring the worst. This is assuming uh, 4 3 to 1 remove 8. So, uh, I think something that, I mean, you can't really control what position you play at. <laughs> um, but what you can control is the, the leaders that you pick. So, here are some win rates by leaders. So, after this, we'll move on to win rate by position and like win rate percentage for leader by position. But, but let's talk about it overall first. So, first of which, let's talk about. Um, the abnormality. So the thing that is different from I think our previous data set is that uh, Paul is faring a lot worse than um, what we thought he would be. Previously, he was hovering around like the little Amanikas Memnon range, but he's doing a lot worse in uh, four three one two remove eight. I think he is just picked more in worse positions. So he suggests suffering in that manner. Or players who are aren't very good at Paul just like to play Paul. Paul is something that I think a lot of players gravitate to because it's like one of the first few leaders they play. The next thing I'll talk about is the if you if you read the colors of this chart, right, the, the more red the, the colors are, the less they are played. So here we have Elisa, Romber, and Memnon who are doing exceedingly well. However, because of the their their low, relatively low game count, right, you can take this data with a pinch of salt. However, also I think these leaders have some potential, uh, but whether they should be performing as well as they are, I think you should probably taper it down a little bit. 
uh, because like when more people play them, the win rate gen generally comes down. Okay, so the win rate percentage by leader for fourth position. So first things first, if you look at this chart, the the the, the bars that are white, right, are games with low sample count, meaning the there are less than thirty games played. So there, so for that leader in that position, so you should take those those columns with a um yeah with a, yeah just just you should just take those data points uh, and say they're not it's extremely accurate but you can still look at them okay so the first thing we'll look at is are those leaders okay so those leaders low low game count uh, can kind of ignore so the things we expect in fourth position right is the strong leaders are still going to be strong so that means Tessia and Ilban are, are the clear favorites. Um, with their win percentages not being as high as I thought they would be, uh, I thought they would be more oppressive like against weaker leaders, but they're still hovering at what they were in 4-3, uh, 2-1 remove 6. So with Tessia being uh, slightly over 30% and Ilban being around 28%. So very good for fourth position, and if you're in the fourth position, you should look at these two leaders. The other leaders you should look at are Beast and Baron. So um, these are with Ilban and Tessia. These are the four, four of the five, like A or S tier leaders. Um, yeah. So Beast and Baron do quite well in fourth position. The lead, the the A tier leader that you shouldn't pick in fourth position is um, Vicon Handro. So Handro has a very poor win rate at uh, position 4 uh, <laughs> really very low win rate like less than 15% and so I think this uh, just a cautionary tale to to everyone who's playing Handro Handro has a good win rate but just not at position 4 okay so when we're looking at so, so the rest of the stats actually are quite normal like if you look at the rest of the stats uh Lito, Amani Kes, Paul and Helena is quite in line with, with what with what you expect so in fourth position pick a strong leader and if you don't you're relative you're sabotaging your, day, your game I think quite funny that it's like Ariana is doing so well here but Ariana has like four games played I think in, oh, no 11 games played in fourth position so that's why you should ignore that Ariana column so in third position, right, we have um, similar things, but now Hanjo is a very good pick in third position. In third position, he's doing extremely well. Uh, I mean, Ilban and Tessa are still doing very well, but I think in Hanjo in third position, like there are, a lot of times he's picked when there are no other good leaders. So he, if they are, if position one and two are not very oppressive then 100 at third position is very strong um, but overall yeah 100 is a good pick in third position there, there are some very interesting stats in third position and there's some leaders that just do better than others and i do think that is due to uh getting early re combat rewards in round one and also getting uh round seven combats so next you have uh prince romber prince romber has a good win rate in position three it's not a lot of games but it's more than 30 Okay, so he has about 29% win rate at position 3 and I find it interesting. <laughs> um, I think a lot of people have counted Romber out this entire exp expansion. So to, to see him do well is very interesting. I think in position 3, you, you kind of are able to get uh, resources from round, round 1 combat at a relatively cheap price. At the same time, you're also able to... to uh, be the first to act for round 7 combat and that makes some combat lines viable and maybe that's why Romba succeeds in this position. Amani Kes is also doing relatively well in this position, like better than Beast and Baron. So I think Amani Kes is a leader that you want to pick when you have... Uh, you, you can see the leaders that are left and you know that leaders that, uh, that want to go to Wealth Mentat are not in front of you so if you can if you see those leaders that are not in front of you and you see a good imperium role with something to grab with your signet ring uh it is i guess it, position three is the best position for him to do it at so i like when i play amani cast like position three is generally where i want to pick him so i'm not surprised for his stats to be relatively good here 
Okay, moving on to position one. <laughs> if you look at position one, you can see the, the Ilban and Tesla win rate. So, um, it highly suggest that you pick them up in position uh, four and three. If not, when you when you leave them to position uh, one and two, like their win rates are astronomical. Okay, so in position one, we've seen Yuna do terrible in the other positions, but Yuna in position one seems to be doing pretty well. So she has around around a twenty seven twenty eight percent win rate. Uh, and this is is decent. So if you're gonna pick Yuna, position one seems to be the position to do it. I think you can uh smuggle up and be quite happy with your game. Okay. Uh other leaders that are good also is like Hanjo, because you can get some uh, compensation through smuggling. But if you look across the board, right, all the win rates are more or less between like the 27 to 23% like all the way from Yuna all the way to Lido it's, it, it's like there are no like big steps alright uh, then yeah all, all, all the leaders are, are seem somewhat viable at position 1 except for Helena Memnon and Ariana so with these 3 leaders maybe you should try to avoid picking them um, it seems like Helena is, is one of those picks that uh, you should pick only if you are you know how to play Helena. I think some players do well with Helena, but if 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 you're not good at Helena, you probably should avoid it. And yeah, just Memnon maybe not great in position one. For position two, right? So we have data for most of the leaders. So this is one of the good things with the remove move eight system. Like players just play more of the low tier leaders more. Uh, relatively people still play the, the high tier leaders but you get more data points for everything that's <laughs> for the low tier leaders so we actually don't have a lot of data points for Ilban in second position like no one leaves leaves it up for second position but the first thing we'll talk about is Yuna Yuna is traditionally a strong leader in position 2 you get wealth, smuggling all very easily and very cheaply however she seems to be doing poorly in position 2 um, I, I I don't think it's because Yuna is bad in position two. I think you is you it's because Yuna uh sometimes goes full space uh in position two. And I think full space for Yuna is one of the worst things she can do. I think the value you get from full space is very, very low. You probably want to hit wealth more and hit smuggling more and still aim for your early sword master. So I think this is just like people not knowing how to play Yuna in second position. Uh but you know the second position is doing quite poorly now. Next is uh Duke Armani Cass, which is doing very poorly in second position. I think if he's left to second position means the Imperium Bro is probably probably bad. And in second position, unless he gets like smuggle smuggle, like his game is very tough. Like get, getting enough Solari for him for Swordmaster and getting a good timing to buy it is, is very tough. Um, and then also you get blocked on Mentat a lot uh, rounds 3 and 4 if you don't get Swordmaster also so Amanik has not very good in second position I think some interesting things to see is that um, I think Elysia and Romper are also doing pretty decently but you can see across, across the board as long as you're not playing like Vito, Yuna, Paul, uh, Ikaz or Ariana like most things are playable <laughs> so but, but even then, like, Lito is at a 22% win rate, which is pretty decent from second position. So, second position is still strong. Uh, just hope you, you roll the dice and get something decent. <laughs> so, one thing we have to talk about is the difference between the, the rank system and the Imperium Cup system. So, I've tried to, like, normalize this data so to make it make sense to, to you, right? So, assuming that in rank game, you get a certain amount of points for first place, and in the Imperium Cup, you get five points, right? And so, if we, if we equalize that, right? So the thing about the Imperium Cup is that everyone gets points. If you're in first place, you get five points. Second place, you get three points. Second, uh, third place, you get two points. Fourth place, you get one point. So like, everyone gets like this one point for participating, and then you get like a uh, four, four to one points for first, second, or third. And <clears throat> and how this changes from the rank system? Right, rank system. If you get first, you get points from the second, third, and fourth player. Uh, and the amounts are different. Okay, so you get more points from the fourth player and less points from the second player. Um, but in terms of how how it feels, right, in the rank game, finishing first is is very important. Right, you can you can finish. Uh, fourth a lot of games but if you finish first a decent amount of times eventually your rating will still climb if you are constant second place or third place finisher you will not your rating will not climb so <coughs> the important thing in the rank system is to finish in first position however the, the, the difference in the Imperial Cup is that the first position is good but it's not as coveted it's not as, as important I think it's important in the, in the Imperial Cup to not finish last uh, you generally want like a 
second or first place finishes, but third is not terrible as well, but trying to avoid fourth. And because of how the games are, <coughs> it's not always important to hunt for first. Uh, it's important to see like if I can get second, um, if, if I can get enough points to get, to, to get second, maybe I should work for, for that. So that's one of the difference between the Imperial Cup and, and the rank system. So do note that the systems are different and people play differently. Players will hunt the leader down less and try to secure their own points. And they do this through many ways, through like getting early combats or just like buying spice missiles early. And the, the, the biggest offender of this is probably uh, spice satellites. Spice satellites in a, in a normal game can be like an early death sentence uh, because it costs so much and you don't get any tangible rewards. However, in I think in tournament play or in the hidden assets tournaments, right? Uh, Spy satellites is really very powerful because it sets you up for second place very well. You just need someone to end and you don't really care about them ending because you, you just settle with second place. So Spy satellites is very strong. Um, and yeah, you just get as many points as you can. The games can still end around round seven and they will end very suddenly as well. <laughs> because also no one is chasing the, the, the first place with alliances. This might change with the how card players currently play, playing, but this is what we saw in, in previous tournaments. I think the most important thing about the Imperium Cup or the Hidden Assets tournaments, right, is that you you should just make friends and have fun. The, the group stages are the best for this. Um, scheduling is relatively easy, and uh, you play multiple games with each other, so you you hang out with boys and talk and just have a lot of fun. I think in, in this group for my last tournament which is the GBI, right? So like players like Nightmare, uh, Felt Death, and Blackstone are players which we, we talk a lot and we have a lot of good banter, and that now we can like um, call ourselves friends. Like if you never like interact in this manner with Felt, you might think that he's very abrasive. Uh, but he's he's nice. He's he's, he's like <laughs> there are some things about him that. Just this way, he, he's a good player. He's he's a good friend, and uh, yeah. And I don't think that without this group K experience, I would not have like interacted with him in this manner. So take a, enjoy your groups. I think groups are the most fun part. Scheduling is easy, and and you have multiple games. And yeah, just make friends, have fun. Uh, and for all the new players who are playing in in this tournament, uh, welcome to TTS, and uh, welcome to the to the community. Um, hope you have fun in this tournament, and hope you do well. I'll see you around. Bye.